uh, I want you to please join me in the book of 2 Samuel. It's a very, very familiar story. Uh, we all know about this David that faces Goliath. And I'm not really going to talk about the David and the Goliath. I'm going to talk about the cause. Uh, 1 Samuel, it's in the Old Testament, way in the back, guys. It's before 2 Kings and before Psalms and all that stuff. So go all the way back. You're going to find not 2 Samuel, but 1 Samuel. I mean, I'm, yeah, 1 Samuel, and I want you to go to chapter 17, okay? 1 Samuel chapter 17, and I'm going to st uh, start in verse 28. When you're there, if you could do me a favor and stand for the Word of God, it is my custom for, to stand for the Word. When you're there, please say amen. When you're not there, if you're not there, say hold up. Hold up, all right. 1 Samuel, it's in the back, and it's going to be... Verse 28 through 30. Just real, real quick. The word of God reads, Now Eliab, his oldest brother, which is the older brother of David, heard when he spoke to the men, talking about David, and Eliab he got angry. Angered was aroused against David, and he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart. For you have come down to see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? Then he turned from him towards another and said the same thing. And these people answered him as the first ones did. And Father, I just ask you that you anoint my lips. Let it be you speaking through me, Father. Open up the ears of men and women that are in this house. Speak, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. And everyone say, amen and amen. You may have a seat. So I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need you to pay attention. I need you to stay awake. You should have gone to the bathroom before you came in. So be still. Don't move. And that's it. All right, guys. So here we have this very, very familiar story. And I want you to pay attention because I want you to go into the story. Every time you come here, God wakes you up. He sits you down here. It is God speaking directly to us. He knows each and every single person that is in this house. So sometimes you might feel like I'm talking about you. I'm not. It is God that hears your prayers and sees your tears. And that we serve a God of on time. And God called us this morning to tell us that we are called to a great cause. And I want you to just really, really meditate on just that, that you are called for a great cause. And here we have this familiar story about David and Goliath. David, the small little shepherd boy, just imagine the small little shepherd boy. If you do not know the story, you have to go back to the first Samuel so you can read it. He was tending the sheep. He had a great heart to take care of what God entrusted him with. When his father Jesse told him, listen, I need you to go and visit your brothers during the battlefield. And I want you to go and take all this food to them, the cheese and the bread and all this other stuff. And you'll see it in the story there when you go read little deeper. His brothers are the ones that are at war. And they, and not David. David was tending the sheep. But his father calls David and says, I need you to go and visit your brothers. And when you go visit your brothers, go check up on them. Take them this food. And I want you to come back and just give me a report on how my sons are doing. So that's the story. This is where we're at. David is called to go and feed his brothers. So the Bible says that he rose in early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper. He just didn't leave them by themselves. And when he got to the camp, he heard everyone screaming and shouting back and forth because the army was on that side and this other army was on this side. And they were going back and forth, just screaming and shouting. And when he got there, this is what he heard. And he ran to the army's camp. And he ran and he greeted his brothers just to say, hello. And you would think that the brothers would be excited for that. And David sees that all these things that are going on and everybody that is, that is there is afraid. And here's everyone being afraid, everyone running away from this big old giant. So you can imagine David taking food to his brothers to check up on them. And all he sees is people just arguing and fighting. But what he sees is that the army, his brothers and everyone else is, is actually in fear. And they're running away from this big old army, this man that is real tall named Goliath. And that's who they're running for, from. That's, that's what David walks into. He walks into this battlefield to see everybody afraid and scared. And these are men that are supposed to be, you know, in, in the right position and uh, uh, men, men fully armored, ready to fight. And now they're scared and they're running away. 
No man would ever even take on Goliath. I mean, you will figure that one of those guys that are strong and built and they're armored, they will fight Goliath, yet no one from there would even fight this man. So Saul, he, the king, the king there, he says, the man who kills the Goliath will be rewarded. See, because the thing is, is this situation had become so desperate that Saul needed to offer some things for anyone that will fight this man. I will offer you all these things on a cash award. I will offer you the princes. I will, I will offer you tax exemptions. You don't have to pay no taxes. Whoever can fight this man, because Saul being the king sees that the army is backing up. He sees that the men are running. Instead of running to the king, they're, to, the, to the giant, they're running from the giant. I always talk about that. Don't, don't run from your problems. Run to your problems. Don't talk about your problems. Talk to your problems. When you're a man and a woman of God, you got what it takes. Hallelujah. Just like what I preached last night, man up. You got to count the cost and know who you are and who your father is. And you can stand against anything that might look like it could defeat you. When others are running, and I'm talking about those that do not know Christ, they got to run because they're scared. But when you come to Jesus, man, there should be no fear because God didn't give you a spirit of timid. He didn't give you a spirit of fear he gave you a spirit of sound mind and power and authority he says just stand strong no matter how big it looks and, and i was reading something uh, and i was telling carlos one of these things that it's pretty cool to have an attitude like david because david's attitude was different from everyone else david's attitude he saw goliath not as a threat too big to hit but as a target too big to miss that amazing he didn't see it as a, as something that is just too big to hit but as a target too big that he cannot miss that's how he saw it a lot of people see it man this is too big for me I can't handle this thing and David had a different attitude so if you're taking notes it's all about the attitude man it's how you handle the situation that it might not look like you can defeat it but when you have that attitude of Christ that mindset of Christ and say man the the enemy has already been defeated a long time ago so here the situation becomes so desperate that Saul says hey man here, I'm losing everybody and here comes the, the army they're gonna destroy us if anyone can go up against that giant I will give them this princess, no more taxes. I will give you a cash reward, all these things. And yet, here's little David. Everyone didn't want to take on that except little David. He says, I'll do it. I'll go. Just let me do it. Eliab's a brother, David's older brother. He was so upset at David. Why did you come down here for it, David? And what about your sheep where they're at? I mean, you will figure that he will be happy that his brother's coming down to visit him so I haven't seen him in a long time but instead he's upset at David because he showed up and I was thinking about what why one of the why is the reason that his brother would be upset first I believe that the brother was mad because he felt that David was insignificant he felt that David was just worthless I mean who's this little boy and he felt probably that he was not even in a position or in the right position to even speak up yet this little boy with with bread and cheese that's all he had to do is go check up on them and he goes into and sees a battle and sees everybody running away second I believe that maybe he was angry because he felt that he knew David's motivation I know your pride is what the word of God says I know why you hear David and yet he didn't really know David's heart because David didn't have that heart of pride he wasn't there to show off he was there because he loved his brothers. He wasn't running because he knew who his father was. Not Jesse, I'm talking about the father. God Almighty was on his side. And third, I believe that his brother was angry because David was, was right. That, I believe that's why the main reason his brother was angry is that, man, no matter what I say, I know that David is right. Because when you are greatly afraid, when you are really, really afraid, the last thing in the world you want is for someone to tell you to be courageous. The last thing you want is for someone that is not even in a battlefield, that is tending the sheep, that you say that it's worthless and you shouldn't even be here. And then this is the one that you say that you shouldn't be here, is the one that is telling you, why are you running from this Goliath? The last thing anyone wants in this world is for someone to tell you to be courageous. Have you ever had somebody say, hey, be strong, and then deep down inside you're like, I am strong, but you're really not. Because then you're not acting like you're strong. Because you're fearing, because of what comes out of your mouth. The last thing you want is for anyone to correct you, anyone to tell you anything, because you feel like they're against you. But deep down inside, you know they're right. And here is this brother. He's angry because he knows that no matter what he says, 
You came for the food and all this stuff, and I'm telling you all these things, but I know deep down inside that you're right. And it made him angry instead of being happy. And that's why here is, I'm here this morning. The reason I believe that I'm here this morning, because I've been talking a lot about obedience, a lot about sacrifice, about the distractor. We, if you haven't been here, I said, if the devil cannot destroy you, he will distract you. My, my son preached about your boat buddies, that whoever you're hanging around with, if they're preventing you from stepping out of the boat and being that walking on water kind of guy, that you trust God and believe God, a man that will take a risk, a man that will say, you know what, if you don't want to go, I'll go. Because God didn't save me just to be in the boat. He saved me to come out of the boat and walk on water and trust him and believe in him in the name of Jesus. And that's why I believe that I'm here today not to get anyone upset. I'm not here like the brother to get anyone angry or anything like that. And I want to I ask you a question. Is there not a cause is there not a cause because that's what David says is there not a cause I want you to know that every believer is called for a great cause every believer is called for a great cause in the name of Jesus <laughs> let me tell you something David he's he's he he stuck to his position he stuck to his position no doubt that what his brother was telling him actually hurt him I mean, you will figure that his brother would say, hey, thank you. But instead, he was just telling them all these things. Like, you, you don't belong here. You don't got what it takes. You, you, you don't come and tell me about the war because you don't know nothing about the war. And, I, and I, I'm pretty sure that David was hurt by what he was told, but he would not let it hinder him. Let God speak to you here today because there might be people that are against you or people that say you don't got what it takes or you will never make it. But be like David and don't move and don't let nothing hinder you and stick to your position that God has placed you in. Hallelujah. If God calls you, I always say that he will sustain you. He will be with you through the, through the end. David kept concerned with God's cause before anything, I'm going to say it again. David kept concerned with God's cause before anything else. His concern was God's cause. His concern was God's cause before anything else. And that's the way it should be with us, seeking the kingdom of God first. Everything should be others first. We come last. Last night when I was preaching at the men's, I said, hey, it's not about us. It's about others. God already saved your life. You got to go and tell somebody else the goodness of God, what he did in your life. God already set you free. You got to go and tell somebody else how God set you free. He can set you free in the name of Jesus as well. God turned your life around, man, and set it on solid ground. Your job is not just to sit there and be afraid and have fear because if you're a child of God, a child of the Most High, you're supposed to go and tell someone else and tell them, get up in the name of Jesus. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You're supposed to pour into their lives and that that's how David is. He kept concerned with God's cause before everything else. When David was, misunderst was misunderstand and publicly rebuked by his own brother, probably amid the laughs of other soldiers. Can you imagine all these things were happening? He could have quit. He could have quit. Many people would have quit right there and then. But he showed the strength of them. He showed the strength of them, armor of God in his life, and he replied rightly. He didn't care about his glory. He didn't care about his success, but only for the glory and success of the Lord's cause. Woo, hallelujah. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. He didn't care about his glory, not about me. He didn't care about his own success, but only for the glory and success of the Lord's cause. Uh, hope you understand me. See, when you talk weak, when you say, I don't know how, but you're a believer, what does it say about your God? Because if God is with you, and greater is he that is in you, than he that is out in the world, everything that comes out of your mouth should be nothing but power, authority, Everything that comes out of your mouth should be for the glory of God. So when you stand strong, who's going to get the glory? Not you. He's going to get the glory. When, when, when you get hit so hard that you lose it all and you're still standing and you're here praising the name of Jesus, who's going to get the glory? 
it is, he's going to get the glory. When you make it, when you didn't know how you were going to make it last week, but you're here today, guess what? God gets all the glory. Hallelujah. When you wanted to give up and throw in the towel and said, I am done, but you're still alive and you're well and you're in this house, you should stand up and say, God gets all the glory. Hallelujah. When you were hooked on drugs or hooked on alcohol or pornography, but you've been set free. Hallelujah. God gets all the glory. When you can stand in the midst of the enemy and said, you say what you want to say. I'm not going to be discouraged. I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to run away. You might not believe, but I believe in a God Almighty that he is on my side. And because of him, I am here. I'm not here because of you. I'm not here because of you. I'm not awake because of you. I'm here because Jesus woke me up this morning because he has a plan, hallelujah, for my life. That's the way it should be, is that you're not here for anybody else but Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It is for God's glory and the success of the Lord's cause. Goliath was, when, when, when he stood there, and when he didn't care about his glory, and when he didn't care about his success, but only for the glory and success of the Lord's cause, Goliath was dead right there. I'm going to say it again. When he didn't care about his glory, or when he didn't care about his success, but only for the glory and success of the Lord's cause, Goliath was a dead man right there. I told you, when you know who you are, and when you walk in your God's given authority, hallelujah, when you walk with your head lifted up, just knowing who you are, not all cocky and not all sarcastic and not all like you have it all together but when you walk around knowing that Jesus is with you hallelujah when you walk around knowing that if it hadn't been for the Lord I wouldn't be here today hallelujah when you walk in and you say I fear no devil I'm walking right to the problem I'm not gonna run from you you're gonna run from me hallelujah because no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper and when you walk around like that, the giant is already defeated. Because you have that attitude. I said, man, you see that as an inconvenience. I see that as an opportunity. <laughs> Hallelujah. When they tell you you have cancer, you walk out of there and say, praise the name of Jesus. Because when I'm healed, when I'm cancer zero free, God's going to get all the glory. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing happening in my life or my children's life without passing through the hand of God. I ain't giving no credit to the devil. I ain't telling nobody that the devil's making this happen. No. If, if it's happening in my life, it's because God opened the door and allowed the enemy to come in and mess with me. And he did that because he knows what kind of son he has. He knows what kind of daughter he has. He told the devil to Job, go ahead and mess whatever you want, but don't touch my anointed one. One. No one can take you out. You take yourself out. You can stand there and tell the devil, do what you got to do, but no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper because I am the head and I'm not to tell. I'm above and not beneath. So when you're getting hit left and right, you got to say, Jesus, what are you trying to tell me? And God is like, just stand, just stand strong. Don't back away. Don't run. I'm doing this to you, and I'm putting all this pressure, and it's not the enemy. It is me that is putting all this pressure because I need you to depend on me and run to me. I need you to draw near to me. And whatever it takes to you, for you to get right here, then I'll do whatever it takes, even if it hurts you, even if it's uncomfortable, even if you don't like it, because I'd rather you be in the presence of God than go to hell. So you come to me, God says, and whatever it takes for you to praise me, I'll make it happen. God is such a faithful God, man. And sometimes we feel like he's not for us or he's not even there. I talked to, uh, last Wednesday, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. That when you draw near to God, then you got this strength that comes upon you because you're drawing near to God. Way over there and God way over here, you can say, I rebuke you, Satan, the devil's edge. Come on, just when the service is over so I can hug you, let's go back home, let's do what you like to do. You know what you like. And he'll hug you and he'll take you and then you go all the way to Wednesday or probably next Sunday. You're rolling in like if you just ran out of gas. And gas is high right now. You can't afford to lose, run out of gas, my brothers and sisters. In other words, you can't afford to be without Jesus. 
You can't afford to just take a week off and then want to come roll in like, oh, I needed this. No, God said, man, I can give you this. I can satisfy you every single second of your life. Every day you can be happy. Rejoice for this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yesterday is gone. Whatever happened in the parking lot is gone. The good thing about it that you're here today, that means that God snatched you from the hands of the devil and said, devil, that's my son and that's my daughter. And I'm going to put them in here to hear my voice, God says. Hallelujah. That's the way God works. That's the way God works. Some of you probably came in depressed. Some of you probably came in here and said, man, I want to commit suicide. Maybe some of you came in here angry. Maybe some of you fought all the way in the parking lot and all the way walking, and then you saw a brother say, behave, the church is here. The people from the church are watching. <laughs> we got cameras. We see everything. <laughs> it's crazy how you can fight all the way to the parking lot, man. But when you come in here, it's a different story. That's why the Bible says, hey, don't neglect of the gathering of the saints. I know it's not about the building. The building falls where the church. I know all that. But it's good to surround yourself with other eagles in the name of Jesus. It's good to surround yourself with other men and women of God and worship God. I said on Wednesday, how do you, how do you draw near to God? It's through worship. It's through prayer. It's through praising the name of Jesus. Away from the Bible, I always say, away from the word of God, then you, you, you'll sin all day. And I'm here to tell you that you just need to worship God. Change the station and your radio. Lift up your hands and, and praise his holy name. And when you're doing those things, the devil, he, every time he picks in, he's like, ah, he's still lifting up his hands. Yes, I am. He's still praising. Yes, I am. Oh, man, now his wife. Oh, now his children. Oh, now they're praying at the table. Oh, man, I should have taken him along. That's right. You should have taken me out a long time ago. But now I know better. Hallelujah. I know that God loves me and he is for me and not against me. Man, I pray that every single person here, this word comes into you, and you not only hear the word, but you be a doer of the word. I said, man, I'm not listening to this for nothing. Don't say, man, I wish so-and-so was here so they could hear this word. No, if God wanted so-and-so here, God would have put so God wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to me. That's why God brought you here today. Praise God. So he didn't care about the glory. He didn't care about the success. And that's when Goliath was dead right there and then. This is where the battle was already won. David fought a battle which caused him far more thought. Watch this. This is so important. David fought a battle which caused him far more thought. I want you to hear this because this, this speaks volumes to me as well. David fought a battle that caused him far more thought, prudence, and patience. The battle with his own brothers and army was more trying than the battle with Goliath. Whew. Many times we meet more troubles from our own friends, our own families, our own church members. Fights that we shouldn't be fighting with each other. We shouldn't be not uh, agreeing with the, each other when it's a great cause. We should be fighting together. And sometimes myself, I feel like the battle that is over there, I'm fighting more battles in here, turning fires off that I shouldn't be turning off when we should all be in one accord and say, that devil is trying to take you, not only you, but me. So let's rise up together and let's fight this giant together and stop wasting time. Hallelujah. And here is his brothers fighting against his own brother instead of saying, man, I'm glad you're here. Come on, put the cheese away. Put the bread away. Thank you for all that, uh, but let's, let's fight now because it takes one person to stand up, and this little David is the one that stood up against this giant. And I want you to tell, I want to tell you, each and every one of you here to stay focused, amen, because you are called for a cause. And because you are called for a cause, the distractor will come and take you off track. He will rerail you. He will derail you. He will take you out. Just because you heard right now that you are called to a great cause, the enemy will bombard you as soon as you walk out this door. Because he knows what's inside of you. He knows what you got. He knows that you have a mouth on you. Some of you have a mouth on you. Like those mouths get... You can kill someone. Some of you have a wife right next to you. 
If you have a wife like that, don't call her a rebuke you devil. She's not the devil. It's just it, the battle's not against flesh, okay? She's, uh, she just, she needs a lot of prayer. And vice versa. Because the thing is, is God will, God will use men and women of God that were fighters in the world to bring them into the kingdom of God to be fighters for the kingdom of God. God will use people that were just broken, that were, that were not even uh, looked at to even fight a battle, to bring them up and say, man, I, I need that little shepherd boy to come and defeat this giant. Because if all the other ones that are tall and strong or the armor and have all the weapons, if they defeat the giant, they're going to feel like they did it. I need somebody that is tending to the cheap. I need a, a drunk, an alcoholic, a drug addict. I need someone that is hooked on pornography. I need someone over there that is just broken. Someone that went through, been through hell and back. Someone that's been in, someone that knows that it knows that it, nothing can happen without the presence of God. I need someone that he's not going to get the credit. So when people look at them and say, isn't that that alcoholic? Yeah, how did he defeat that? Because Jesus is with him. Because God is for him. That's when God gets all the glory. Hallelujah. So don't ever feel like you don't got what it takes. Don't feel like the brother felt about David that you're worthless, that you, you lived a rough life. Man, God loves crazy, crazy people. He loves people that have been down and out. I mean, God loves everyone. He loves everybody. But he'll use every single person if you allow him to use you. Come on, let's give it up for, for the Lord. Come on, Josh, praise God. <laughs> This is, this, is, um, this is how it is for many in our world. I feel like David sometimes asking the same question, is there not a, a cause? Is there, in other words, is there no commitment anymore? And it's, and it's sad because every speaker that spoke last night about man up, this almost had the same thing. Like we can, we, it only takes a few men to turn the world upside down. It only took 12 men to turn the world upside down, man. It took this, this man right here, out of 60-something men that went to retreat, one man that God can use to come and make a difference on the west side of San Antonio. And guess what? He gets all the glory. So if one man can, can make a difference in our community, can you imagine all of us rising up and saying, you know what? No matter what comes my way. If I lose my house, if they turn my lights off, if I lose a child, if I lose all these finances, if, if things get broken and things get lost, if it doesn't go my way and you can cry all you want and you can yell like I did and say, why Jesus and all this stuff. But when you can stand and know who your God is and you can say, you know what, no matter what, uh, I didn't like this, but God, if you say you're real and if you say you're going to keep your promises, I'm going to stand here cut bleeding no matter what it takes because I want to get to the other side and if I have a son and a daughter that is watching me in my life I gotta stand not only for me because it's not about me I gotta stand for my son and my children and my wife I gotta be that man I gotta be that woman of God that I can stand in the midst of trials stand in the midst of storms and no matter what they say or what reports come against me or what people say I know who I am I am called to a great cause and and because I'm called to a great cause, all these things are going to come against me. But I know that I know that God didn't call me so I can fail. God called me because he knows that I can succeed with him on my side. He knows the end from the beginning. That's the God that I serve. Hallelujah. So here's David to say, man, is there not a commitment? Why is everybody running? Is there, is, is there not a cause? So what he's saying is, man, is there no commitment? Here, here's your king, here's Saul. Y'all are running. I mean, if, if nobody fights him, who's gonna fight him? If nobody defeats him, who's gonna defeat him? I don't know about you, but I got to a point where I didn't wanna run anymore because the cocaine was defeating me. Me staying up every single day was defeating me. And it was already getting to the point where my wife and my children that it was defeating them. And if, if, if I wouldn't have said, is there not a cause for my life? I mean, is this is it? I mean, I'm a good husband, a good father, and, you know, I'm okay. I got a job and everything. But I was so lost, man. I was so blinded. I had Jesus in my life. I didn't have Jesus in my life. But I thought I had it together. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you don't have it together. If you don't have Jesus in your life, you're lost. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus is in the house here today. 
I'm here to, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is in the house here today. I'm here to tell you that Jesus wants to grab you. He wants to save you. He wants to carry you. He wants to take you places that you've never been before. Hallelujah. He wants to open doors. Hallelujah. That no man can shut. My God wants to bless you. And not only you, but he wants to bless your children and your children's children. My God, he wants for you to be happy and smile and have a peace. He wants you to open up the curtains of your house and let the darkness flee so the light can come in in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And you'd be surprised how many people will not open the door. You'd be surprised how many people have heard the knock and said, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I'm just not ready to give my life to Jesus because when I give my life to Jesus, I want to make sure that I'm all in. I don't want to play no games. I hear that all the time. You'll never be ready. Come as you are. Come all broken. Come with the cocaine. Come with the heroin. Come with the addiction. Come with the anger. Come with the pornography. Come with the adulterous spirit. Just come to Jesus and just stand there and watch God chisel every single thing around your life. And hallelujah. Woo. Hallelujah. So when people see you, they're like, wow. Because a man can change you. A curandero can change you. The little crystal ball can change you. Nothing can change you. Only Jesus can change you. He is a way, the truth, and the life. That is who he is. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. He is the alpha and the omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. Hallelujah. He is our morning star. He is El Shaddai. He's the one that provides for us. Jehovah Jireh is in the house. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, like David, how he said, is there not a cause? In other words, is there not no commitment? Are we not the covenant people? Are we not the promised people? Are we not the ones that God called us? Then why are we running from our problems? Why are we running scared? How, why are we saying that we can't do this? Why we're saying, man, if I quit, Pastor, I'm going to start getting all these attacks and I'm going to start having convulsions and I can't just quit cold turkey. You can do all things through Christ, hallelujah, that strengthens you in the name of Jesus. All you got to do is believe, hallelujah, and trust God. And I'm here to tell you that David, he stood up to the Goliath. He stood up to the Goliath and he didn't show a lot of backbone. But he showed more courage than anyone else in Israel. Out of 60 something men when I went to the retreat, not everybody stood up, but I stood up. I stood up with cocaine in my sock, in my luggage. I stood up knowing that I had that drug with me at church, but I stood up. I said, God, what am I doing? Nobody might know what I'm doing, but you have the biggest camera of them all. And you know exactly what I do in the secret places. I can't hide from you, God. And God said, that's right. That's why you're here today, because I want to change your life. I want to give you the best high that you ever, ever have experienced in your life. Hallelujah. <laughs> David says to Saul, and I pray that you say this to Jesus. I will go and I will fight this Philistine. Some of you got some things you got to fight, man. Some of you got to fight some lust. Some of you have to fight pornography away, some anger, insecurity. Some of you have to fight this thing like this me, me, me mentality, selfishness. Some of you got to fight that pride away from you. Some of you got to understand that you can't do it alone, that you need God by your side. And David says, I'll fight, I'll go. The, the sad thing about it that not everybody wants to fight. They want the easy way out. The Philistines had invaded. They set up camp in the land. There were squatters in Judah's inheritance. In other words, there were people there unlawfully occupying the buildings that didn't belong to them. You got squatters in your house. You got squatters in your life. 
you got this spirits inside of you of darkness and confusion and doubt and, and fear and depression and sadness that are occupying your mind and occupying your body and you walk around defeated and you walk around sad and you walk around angry and fighting all the time. There's some squatters in your life that are occupying that life of yours right now. And the future of the nation, even David's destiny, hinged on the ability to defeat and drive out the enemy. Now, can you relate to this? Often you must defeat a Goliath before you can transition into your future. Sometimes people cannot move any forward until you defeat this. God says, man, I want to. I want to take you places that you've never been before. There's a pastor that said last night, many people will give their life to Jesus, but they won't go all in. They'll leave the back door open just a little bit because fiesta's around the corner. And I, and I, I got to not only get my gordita, but get my drink on. And the parade's coming. Ain't nothing wrong with going to the parade. I'm just saying, when you're not ready to step into an environment that you know that what you like is there, and if you're not strong, it'll take you out. It'll occupy you. And here, you cannot transition to your next destination until you defeat this devil. You think about it. What is defeating me? Some people say, well, Jesus drank. Well, that's Jesus. You know yourself. You can't even drink one because then you want to drink another one, another one, then you want to smoke, and then you want to do drugs. And You can't because the old has gone and the new has risen. Me, myself, I don't believe in drinking wine. I don't believe in drinking beer. I don't believe in tattoos. I don't believe in smoking. And I got tattoos all over my, my body. But I believe that when the old has gone, that means the old is gone and the new is risen. That means I'm set apart. Hallelujah. That means I'm a new creation in Christ. I can't be playing games. Either I'm in or I'm out. Either I'm in or I'm out. I'm not that lukewarm Christian. I'm not that compromising Christian. I don't care what people say, but I know where I came from. And if God set me free from that, why in the world am I going to go back to that? Ain't nothing back there. I'm moving forward in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's so sad that many times the enemy is encamped in inheritance that we rightly own. And God has given us the opportunity to defeat the enemy and drive them out. David's question, is there not a cause, was an indictment, in other words, an accusation of his brother's fear, of his brother's lack of faith, wrong motive, and passivity. And many, many today, they want change, even freedom in their lives but they're unwilling to courageously go after the Goliath that is taunting them. A lot of people want to change, man. When, I, when God came into my life, I knew that even though I flushed the cocaine down the toilet that night, I knew what I had to face at home. I had a bigger Goliath at the house. I had my scales and my baggies and my cocaine. I had to face that Goliath. But I made up my mind when I came home. And I told my wife, give me a trash bag. So what are you doing? He goes, God did something amazing in my life. He changed my life. I'm no longer that cocaine drug dealer. I'm no longer lost. I'm a child of the Most High. God has set me free in the name of Jesus. We're going to get rid of all the cocaine. We're going to get a trash bag, and we're going to take the trash out before the trash takes me out. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand up and pray. like I said, when my wife said, what are you doing in the garage? I said, I'm no longer that slave to sin. That cocaine had me, man. And if you, if you ever done drugs, I was that guy that would go to work and at five or six in the morning, I would still be awake. And I had to do a 20 or a 40 just to stay awake to, to noon and come home and buy some beers and every single day. That was my life. I got used to it. But when I came back from the retreat, man, I thought there was no way out. I was hooked to everything. I thought there was no way out. So when I came back, I said, man, I'm going to, I always tell people, I came from a Saul to Paul. The cussing went away. 
the desire to smoke went away, the desire to drink went away. I was just transformed because I believed in the power of God. And I don't know about anyone here today that you want to say, you know what, I no longer want to be a slave to sin. I don't want to be a slave to pornography. I don't want to be a slave to anger. I don't want to be a slave to the lust. I'm trying, Jesus, but I need you. And if you're here today, you say, man, I need God more than ever. I want you to just lift up your hands and close your eyes. Come on. And I want you to just listen to these words. And I want you to cry out to God here today and ask God to forgive you and to come into your life. Here we go. Savior and Jesus I 